All right. Do you two need a seat? Are you good? Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Um, I'm excited because this is my first live, real training uh, in over a year, over a year and a half. So I haven't done these in a while, and it feels like I'm getting in in house, but not here. So I'm excited to cover um, an important topic of shifts shift in the industry and a shift in the business that is happening right now. So today, guys, on a lot of these trainings I've hosted in the past, and Carl's hosted, uh, where we give you all available options. We're going to talk about a couple different things. There's going to be the one thing, the one takeaway, the one thing that is going to impact business. So I hope this makes it easier because it's not going to be 50 things or things you are to be. So before I get started, I also want to mention September, we are going to have agent panel, one of our favorite things to host because we put in and bring agents from the country, different states, different markets. And we're going to talk about what works for them, there's always some great nuggets that we can take away and some things that we can implement that we're not doing and happening in different markets help us market. In the West Coast, we usually follow and trickle down here, uh, especially some of the lead generation companies and the aggressive real estate companies. So we're getting active. So that's going to be a budget panel. And get off with what are your lead funnels? Today, you guys, it's a bunch of different places from sign call, pillow lead. There's tons of different places we can, should, and generate leads from, right? Anyone here want to share? Let's make this fun and interactive. Anyone here want to share what's working for them? Realtor. Realtor? Open house follow-ups. Open house follow-ups. Love that. Referrals. Referrals. Ooh, that's my favorite. We're going to be talking about that. So other tiny objects, guys. We get solicited on a daily basis. And it's funny because I've been out of production and I get called consistently a couple times a week. Uh, and, and I don't know why they're even calling me because I don't have active listings. I'm not showing up. But there's so many distractions. You can go in every single way out there trying different things. But the one thing that we're going to really focus on today is referrals. And here's why. Uh, agents are spending their money on all that stuff. And I looked up what the top three places agents are really spending money on. And of course, Zillow. Why? Because 70 plus percent of buyers are going through Zillow. And for those of you that don't know, Zillow owns Trulia. They power Yahoo Homes, MSN Homes. 70 plus percent of all buyers, sellers, they're going through Zillow. So love them or hate them, they are the toll booth. You got to go there to get, get there faster or you're going to take the long way and it's going to be a little more uh, expensive doing it without them. Realtor.com, which uh, we just heard mentioned, they're the more accurate leads. The data is more correct. There's not the pre foreclosures the way Zillow has, et cetera. So a lot of agents are spending money on Realtor.com. And truly, a lot of consumers like, for whatever reason, their mobile uh, site gets more SEO and ranks better. People like to use that more on mobile. Either option, either of the three, or whatever your lead systems, your lead uh, generation magnet is, we want to let you know today, and this is something we've been talking about for a couple of years, there are some massive changes coming down the pike. And this meeting today is not to scare you guys. It's not a scared straight meeting of stop using these lead portals. It is not by any means. If it's working for you, continue. But we just don't want the rug to be sweep, swept from under you and for you to get caught off guard, not prepared, not ready for these changes. And I see a couple agents in here that have come to me in the recent weeks, which is why we're talking about this today, with changes that have happened to them where their leads have shifted with these different portals. 
So let's talk about some of the great things with Zillow. Again, if it's working for you, keep it. But just be prepared that things can change like that without you being uh, warned, without your input. You cannot challenge the changes. These corporations and companies, they're here to make money, and they're going to do what's best for them. Some of the good things with Zillow provides great exposure. You're meeting your clients where they are. And the great exposure is you show up on Zillow, which is actually different than Realtor. Like, you're there if you're buying a zip code, so people actually get to see you. If they see your signs in town, uh, if they see your billboard, if they see your car that's wrapped, then they see you on Zillow, it just reinforces that this is your market, you're a local player there. So the exposure online is great. You're meeting the clients there. As I mentioned, 70 plus percent of consumers are using Zillow or one of their platforms. Low cost of entry, I mean, I, I believe you can start as low as $500 to buy a zip code, which is a not, not a bad investment for your business. And they get agents by saying, hey, it's you know, 500 bucks, 6,000 for the year, uh, if you close one deal, how much will you make? That's going to cover it, right? We hear that all the time. You're paying for impressions. Um, it provides consistent leads. It's a great ROI if you can convert. But I think in this room, we all know and have heard agents say how bad the leads are and they're terrible, right? Am I making that up? Someone in our office, the, your office, has said that at some point. I, I think we all probably can name five agents who swear their leads are bad. Not everyone can convert, and that doesn't mean they're not great agents. It's just the responsiveness, building rapport, and the hardest part is, you know, the buyer calls in about 123 Main Street, and you have to be the bearer of bad news that 123 Main Street's not available, and what's their next thing? What do they usually say, guys? I don't want to see anything else. I just wanted that. Right? And, and that's a hard one to overcome, especially when there's no inventory. So you have to be able to convert. If you can, Zillow absolutely works. Here are some of the challenges. Most agents, as I just was talking about, cannot convert. When 123 Main Street's not available, and hey, let me send you something else, let's have a consultation, it, it's like you're trying to you know, pull teeth. No way, I'll call you when I want to see something, and that's a challenge for agents to convert. Subject to price changes. We've, been, we've had agents buying zip codes. You get a call, hey, we're going to lower your impression count. We're going to lower your lead flow unless you're willing to spend X because it's in high demand. Right? So you're subject to that when you're buying leads from Zillow. Subject to availability of territories. I know people buying leads in like Phillipsburg, and I'm like, where's Phillipsburg? <laughs> right? Yeah, well, it's funny. A lot of agents here have probably done deals in Phillipsburg, and I'm like, why are you buying leads in Phillipsburg? And they're like, that's all that was available. Right? You'd love to be in Cranford, East Brunswick, Hamilton, wherever it is that you do business, but you're subject to their availability. And then you wind up building a book of business in an area where it's not really where you want to be, and you can't really leverage it because it's not your local community. You have no presence there, but that's where you can buy leads. So you're subject to that as one of the, the tough things. Most agents don't follow up. That's just the fact. Um, and then you become dependent on leads. You become dependent on them providing you leads. And what happens, which is a very dangerous thing for agents, is the dependency on leads is this. You're not doing anything outbound to build your business. You're not doing anything to continue to push yourself, make yourself marketable, build your brand, be part of the community, build a magnet. Why? Because all your calls are inbound concierge or you know, a lead is dropped in from realtor, et cetera. And that's very dangerous, because if those platforms change, now you're reinventing yourself from scratch. So the dependency on leads is a real thing, guys. Uh, let's talk a little bit about realtor. And realtor, anyone here, and, and raise hands, because I know a couple are, are in here, where. Has anyone got that call from Realtor, specifically Union County, with, with a change? I know she's one in my office. I have two others in my office that got a change. Realtor's great. We're going to talk about um, some of the good points with Realtor, uh, and we're going to talk about some of the changes. Higher quality leads. Does anyone know why the quality of Realtor leads are better than Zillow? Less of the extras. What was that? Less of like the extras, like the pre 
there you go, bingo. Less of the pre-foreclosures, um, less of the list pendants, less, less of the nonsense, right? The exp Realtors more accurate, so typically it converts higher. There's an argument with team leaders and agents generating leads that you know, the concierge, the warm transfer from Zillow winds up being better than Realtor, although the qual it, it's a back and forth, but Realtor does have higher quality leads overall. They typically con con uh, convert better. Consistent lead flow, you're meeting clients where they are, they are on Realtor, low cost of entry, same thing. You know, you could start as low as $500 to get in, and they always tell you, you know, one lead will pay for the annual and the rest is gravy. Um, you're paying per lead. Now, the one difference with Realtor is that you do not have online exposure. If you're buying Cranford, East Brunswick, Hamilton, um, as a zip code on Realtor, you do not show up. Look at Realtor, if you ever have a moment. You do not show up. It does not publish agents. It does not have your photo and your company and your reviews and your past sale. It doesn't have any of that. So you're paying for the lead, you're getting leads, but there's no local exposure to that market. So you do lose a little bit of the online presence because of the lack of exposure. Same thing with Zillow, you're subject to price changes. Um, availability of territories. Most agents struggle to convert. These are sometimes a little harder because you're not getting the warm transfer. These are leads that are coming in, dropped into your email box, and it's on you to follow up. And of course, you're buying realtor leads, you suffer from dependency of leads as agents tend to get dependent on, I don't have to do anything, my leads are coming in, I'm spending this money, that's how I'm building my business. So, anyone wanna guess what one of the changes are that is happening with these portals? Peace. Peace? Peace. Oh, fees? Like a commission, or like a part of the commission. They wanna dip. Wish it was 10%, but they want to dip into your pocket? Mm -hmm. They want to share in some of the revenue? Any other guesses, Mike? They're buying and selling homes. Yeah. They're buying and selling homes. That's another change, the I buyer, an offer, etc. Anything else? They're raising prices. They are raising prices, absolutely. Uh, they've noticed that our industry, we're making 20% more from pre-COVID, 20% more. So guys, this has been great for us, this has been great for loan officers, this has been great for a lot of people, and they wanna partake in that, right? They want a piece of that action. As prices go up and commissions go up, they want to partake. So one of the big changes that, that you were right on, Maylin, is that both portals are looking to switch from buying leads to a referral program. So what that means is, where you were paying for leads monthly, or impressions, as, as Zillow sometimes likes to say, they want to switch that to, hey, we're not going to charge you. Keep your money. But we want 35% on the back end. And that's a change, guys. That is happening now. Our agent that raised our, her hand about a change that happened with Realtor a couple minutes ago, in Union County, I can tell you, I've had three agents in my office literally get a call, what was it, about a month ago? Literally get a call a month ago, hey, thank you for paying for leads for the last couple of years, we appreciate your business, we are stopping this today. So you already started? Union County, absolutely. Union County, 100%. I had a call with Realtor, uh, and I'm gonna talk about it in, the, in a couple slides forward, where they're offering what they're doing with those leads. But Union County, Realtors already pulled it, and they're gonna beta test it. Now remember guys, these companies are huge companies, publicly traded companies. They can't switch their platforms because the shareholders would go crazy. The stock would get really volatile. They can't change their platform overnight, so they do it in little waves. They do it in little steps. They have to prove it, and once it's prove it, proven, they can expand on it. But Right now in Union County, any agents that were buying Realtor.com leads, and imagine guys, and this is why this is a wake up aha moment, uh, imagine if that was your all in. You were spending 1,500, two grand a, a, a month on Realtor.com leads in Union County, and you get a call one day and that's pulled. What do you do? What do you do, right? 
you're going to shift over to Zillow, there's no Union County availability. You're going to wind up in Phillipsburg. <laughs> Right? And that's why we're talking about this today, to prepare you guys for what's coming, give you guys a better option so that if you get that call, you're not scrambling. Just imagine you have a team of people you're feeding and boom, the leads are pulled that day. What do you do? So change number one, they are going to a referral fee program rather than taking your $500, $1,000, $1,500 in paying per lead, they want to share in the upside. And there's more upside for them. There's a lot more upside. There is a lot more upside. And, and this allows them also to prove this model out. And for a company like Zillow, and this is not, again, a scare tactic, um, and I'm not feeding into uh, and commiserating with the fear of, is Zillow going to become a brokerage? But if Zillow can prove that they can make more money on the 35% model, they can prove to their shareholders that maybe a brokerage makes sense. Right? They are really a brokerage. No, they are, but, but they're doing the eye buyer, but opening a brick and mortar you know, brokerage business. They're not operating as, as a broker uh, for, for our standards and, and what we do. They're not in our space yet. So that's Realtors Platform, not Zillow's. But uh, very good question, and I asked that to Realtor. So Realtor favors the paying agents, and we're going to cover that. And if they don't pick up the agents that are paying and supporting their, their lead gen, um, they do push it through Opsity. It's the same. It's basically the same. So they've proven that model out with Opsity, and now fast forward, they're looking to eventually do away with any agents buying leads because they're making more than 35% on the back end. But again, because they're publicly traded, they can't just flip the switch and do it statewide and nationwide. So they're testing it to prove it. And then they can go to the shareholders and the boards of the company and say, hey, here's our new model. Here's how it's worked. Here's how much more profit we're going to make. So this shift has happened. It's happening. And day by day, guys, it's going to continue to happen. So after Union County gets, uh, they have the numbers and the figures, they're going to shift. I don't know if they're going to go to Bergen, Passaic, Middlesex, Mercer. We don't know where they're going next. But one county at a time, they're going to figure this out, and they're going to start pulling leads. So this is how that breaks down. The current plan, you're paying $1,000 a month. You're generating 120 leads a year. Uh, let's say you close 15 of those, whatever your conversion is, 15 of the 120. You make average 8,500 per closing. You generate 127,000. Back out the thousand a month. Net income on that $12,000 investment is about 115. You know, before anything else, not bad. Not bad at all. That's going to switch to zero monthly fee. We don't want your money. And I know a team in New Jersey that was spending 10,000 a month with Zillow. And they're, they're a pretty big team, probably in the top 10. Um, 10,000 a month with Zillow. They got the call from Zillow. And one of our agents here has gotten a call from Zillow already. Let's switch you to this. You save your money. And Zillow's smart, guys. They have you know, a massive company of really smart people that are, are figuring out how to sell this to agents. And they say, listen, that 10,000 a month shifted to something else. Go do some other lead gens. You could generate more leads. And we'll just put you on this 35%. And you don't have to pay that anymore. So this, comp this, this team shifts over. They're telling me about it. And I'm like, guys, let's, let's talk numbers. Are you making more or making less? They're making less, a lot less. But their argument is, well, now we have 10,000 to try other stuff. 70% of the buyers and sellers are on Zillow. What's left to try? Right? The 30% of stuff that we see at conventions, try this. You only have to close one deal and it pays for itself. Carl always says you can go broke in this business with the $19.99 a month gimmicks and the shiny objects. Right? So zero monthly fees sounds good. 10 leads a month, same numbers. You close 15 deals, 8,500, same numbers. But 35,000, it's 44,625. Huge difference. Huge difference. Right? 
that's what they're doing. They were claiming, so if I'm showing one, two, three Main Street to my client that yep. I got from Zillow, yep. he doesn't buy it. I show him 15 houses, he buys something else. They get the referral fee on that as well. When they buy something else, they're claiming the person, that lead. Wow. That lead. We don't even have that luxury. And possibly the referrals that come from it. You're spot on. So, and possibly the referrals that come from it. I don't think they're going to implement that right away. Um, because they don't want to deter agents. But Anastasia, to your point with Opsity, the referrals that come from it, from Opsity, are tagged. And that buyer is tagged for two years. Right? I can tell you, we've worked with them for about five years. Does the buyer know this when they sign up? Is there some kind of documentation they have signed it? I can't answer that, but I could tell you it doesn't really affect the buyer. So I, I, I can't see why they would really tell the buyer, but I could tell you, because I've worked with these companies for many, many years, that they follow up. They have a quality control department because it's like a loss mitigation department that they need to follow up to see what's going on so that they could capture back revenue. And they'll kick you off the platform if they find out. So yes, I, I don't know for sure if the buyers are aware. It doesn't affect the buyers. So whether they're aware or not, doesn't really matter. So how um, do they know about the referrals? They yeah, just call the buyer and ask? They follow up. They absolutely follow up. I, I could tell you that they follow up. And I know it because I've seen people kicked off. And as the broker, I get the call. So guys, it's a huge difference, right? Your net income, instead of 115, it's 82. Now, it's opportunity cost. I'm not saying, guys, run out of here and cancel your Zillow or your, your, your realtor or your bold leads or your boom town or whatever. I'm not saying cancel it by no means. It's opportunity cost if you go down from 115 to 82, but I want you to be aware. There's teams here um, that have infrastructure. They have ISAs. They have support staff that are cold calling. They have lenders, uh, cold calling and follow up, they have lenders paying for half of the leads. So imagine you s get switched to this, you go from 115 to 82, and then your lender also backs out. How profitable is your team? How profitable is your business? Right? And for those of you that were at our top agent panel about two years ago with um, Mike Pagliano from, from New York, really great broker, really great agent, he tells the story. He had his team, he generated about a million one in commissions one year. His net, after all the infrastructure and after fees, et cetera, was about 90 grand. Between the layers of infrastructure, and he'll tell you, he, Carl mentioned it, I mentioned it, Mike has mentioned it, um, between all his layers of infrastructure cost, paying referral fees from these companies, generating the leads, having someone track it, that was his net. And if you go from 115 to 82 and your lender drops off and you can't find another lender willing to absorb that, because who knows what they're going to do on the lender end as well, right? Where the lenders are going to say, well, if I have to pay a referral fee and I have to buy this, I can do something else. It can get really tricky and close to you being at a break even. So just be prepared. But again, we're not saying go oh, pull the plugs tomorrow. Just want to make you aware. It is a great way to build your referral business. You're meeting more people. You're going to build your database of people. So again, guys, if it's working, don't make a shift, but just realize that the change is coming at some point. And it's ideal for agents that can convert. Now, for most agents, it's a harder conversion. And part of the reason why they're making these shifts and they're going to group things together is they're tired of the onesie twosie agents. Trying it out for a couple months, calling them, I'm going to cancel my credit card if you don't stop billing me. Let me out of this contract. Right? I've heard it all. I'm, I'm sure every broker has had to walk an agent through how to get out of these lead platforms because so many just don't convert well. Um, a lot of follow-ups to build rapport. It takes time away from referrals and past clients. Um, and now it's switching to an invite-only platform with the changes. The 35% referral fee, who do you guys think that they want to be working those leads? The ones who convert. The bingo. The ones that convert. The ones with the infrastructure to follow up. They have all the data, guys. 
They have showing time. They have dot loop. They have all, they've been data mining for years. They have all the data. They see when you respond. They see how active you are. They see who's writing offers. So they know who are the agents that they want to work the leads. And it's the ones that convert. And it's an invite only. So rather than paying for leads and having control, now it's a consolidation of zip codes. And that's why I got a call and I'm going to show you what, what Realtor's doing. So they're switching. What Realtor's doing is they're switching buying an individual zip code to buying a zone. Why? Because I don't want to have to, if I were a realtor, I don't want to have to sell 75 different zip codes to agents that are going to be volatile and are going to um, pay, not pay, not convert, especially with this 35%. But if I sell a zone, guess who I can sell it to? Teams, team leaders, brokers. And I don't have to deal with 75, I can deal with 15. And teams, brokers, they're more equipped to handle the leads. They're more equipped to convert because they have infrastructure. They also have maybe more resources where the monetary investment won't be a big problem. So into zones. Uh, it allows for bigger players to spend more money and a lot less for them. Those account reps that call you guys, when you, who here gets a call from a 415 area code and you know what it's about, and you don't answer. I know I don't, and that's Zillow, right? They don't need a bunch of account reps if they're not chasing 75 agents to sell zip codes to in Union County, if they only have to sell 12 to 15. So it helps them not only make more money, lower their overhead. Uh, so for us, though, loss of zip codes, you're going to lose the zip code that you have. It's not available to individual agents, and I heard this directly from high ups in Realtor when I was on a call, a call with them, it's not gonna be offered to individual agents, period, as this shifts. Um, and it's a much higher cost. What was that? Is that Realtor and Zillow? It's Realtor, I can't 100% speak for Zillow, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna mirror each other. It's, it's, their platforms are very similar. They are going to mirror each other. Um, and the cost, by the way, because you're not just buying one zip code, you're buying a territory, the cost is dramatically higher. So let's talk about these zones. And while I was on the phone and, and they're demoing this to me and trying to sell me on a zone, I actually took two screenshots of exactly what that looks like for Union County. Because they've pulled Union County now, now they're out trying to sell zones. And because our company has done very well with Opsity, which is the realtor platform, um, they called me and said, hey, your brokerage converts at one of the highest levels and we want to give you an opportunity to buy one of these zones. So the sales guy got his manager on and I really did a deep dive. But Union County now is broken down into zones. I think it's like Elizabeth, Hillside, Linden, Rawway, et cetera. Then you have your Cranford, Westfield, and then you have Summit all the way to, um, uh, is it Mountainside? It, it's three different zones. So for an agent that was buying the one zip code or a fraction of that zip code, can you really swing the cost of a zone now? No, it's geared to teams and brokers. And then the pricing, as I mentioned, but you know, I, I took another screenshot while on the phone with them, on the call with them, but the pricing that they offered me for 60% of this zone was 7,700 a month for 60% of the one zone, this zone in orange. So for Op City, you need to pay per month and you're giving a referral? You're not paying per month for them, for Op City. This is Realtor. So oh. the, the, the zip codes that you were buying on Realtor, I think someone here mentioned Realtor, was if they pull, as they've pulled Union County, they're merging the individual zip codes into a complete zone, whether it's this zone, that zone, or this uh, bluish purple zone. And rather than paying the 1000 or 1500 a month, you pay nothing, but you're going to be paying 35% on the back end. Or if you're able to still buy, if you're a team leader or broker, you're going to pay a really high amount because you're buying an entire zone. You're buying seven or eight towns at once. So the cost is astronomical. So the average agent paying 1000 a month, you can't go from paying 1000 to 7000 
So it pushes out individual agents, and it's an invite only. So there are going to be two different ways of going about it with them. Either individual will be the 35% or yeah. then the team and broker. Exactly. Exactly. That, that's what they're looking at. So did I go to, did I skip change two? I had a typo. Um, the next change. Yeah, actually that is. So one change is the 35%, two changes are the individual zip codes become zones. The third change, and this is where it gets fun. Anyone know AI? Yeah, artificial intelligence. So who here, and guys, I need interaction. Who here is using a CRM? Almost everyone's hand should be up. Who here, their CRM, can start to communicate with the buyer and auto-respond. It's artificial intelligence. Do you guys know that you can even program some of the questions? So that's AI. Is it a good thing? Absolutely. Buys you time and engages the client. You could turn it off, and you can program it to say exactly what you want to say. But can AI build relationships? Not relationships. It can set appointments. You can get to setting appointment. It's not building a relationship. Right? Data mining, as I mentioned, they've been capturing the data. I got calls when Zillow bought showing time, and agents are like, oh my gosh, we, we got to pull out a showing time. And I said, well, I want to tell you, if I were in production, I wouldn't want to handle those calls. So what, what, what's the alternative? You know, they have the data, they have dot loop, they have a lot of the data. You can buy the data for the companies that don't have ownership of the resources we use. But through that data, they still need people to convert. Because as I mentioned, AI cannot build relationships. So don't be threatened of the fact that they have the data. As a broker, we hear this enough, it's like, don't worry. You know, the data is not gonna put you out of business because they need people to convert. Artificial intelligence cannot do it. Bots, very similar to, very, very similar to um, artificial intelligence. It's computerized systems that can have deeper conversations, not just an auto response. But you know the problem with bots, and I've tried this several different platforms, they can't go off script, right? They can't go off script. When that buyer asks a very specific question, the bot doesn't have the answer to. And we know, we get some very colorful questions sometimes. <laughs> Bots don't know the answer. You know, they can try, but all this stuff is meant to help us. Again, there's a theme here, and that's they can't build relationships. It's a people business. Um, instant offers, someone mentioned it before, because they're buying homes, they're making instant offers. Absolutely. They're not really doing it in New Jersey. I think Jersey and New York are usually the last to get adapted to these things. We have such property taxes. It's a very competitive market um, here in this, in this market. Uh, prices of the homes are higher. And I, I don't think that that's gonna be very effective here, but it's usually not the best offer. We're already dealing with these instant offers through wholesalers, guys. Wholesalers are basically the instant offers that is not here from the big portals, and we have it. Wholesaling has become a sub-industry of our industry. Why? Because realtors aren't outbound, because we got dependent on buying leads, because we got dependent on the phone ringing, and we don't have to pick up and make the outbound call, and now a sub-industry has been created, which is wholesaling, because of us. So don't worry about instant offers. They may come to Jersey, but we already have them through wholesalers. Anyone here sell a house through a wholesaler? Sell their client a house through a wholesaler? I know I have. I know it's very common in our office that wholesalers are sending us stuff and we're working with them. So it's the same as instant offers. Would you explain that to me, wholesalers? Wholesalers are an interesting way to explain it because they're basically doing what realtors do. They're finding a, a seller. They're making them an offer. They're doing what's called an assignment contract where they have the right to assign a contract to someone else. Then they're shopping that around through emails, social media, um, databases, and they're finding buyers for the property at a higher price and keeping the difference. Do they have to be, do they have to be licensed? Not for wholesaling. 
because it's not a commission. Because they are buying the properties, technically, they're selling the contracts. They're owning the properties through contracts. They're not, most of the time, they're not actually closing where they own it, but they have the, they're signing it, but they have the authority to sell the contract for a profit, so it's not commission. So why would a seller do that if somebody didn't profit? Same reason sellers are accepting instant offers, because it's cash, because it's quick, because they don't have to have a line of 50 people outside of their house for an open house. They don't have to be uh, running around all weekend figuring out what to do because they have 20 appointments this weekend. It's an easier, convenient process. So that's the third change. Discount brokers, you know, there's a lot of them popping up. Um, I think you pulled me aside when Purple Bricks came up and I was just like, don't worry, grand opening, grand closing. And that's what happened, <laughs> right? And I used to work with Foxton's, one of the discount brokers. Love them or hate them, they train me well, I want to say, right? I hope so, I'm up here. Um, but there's a lot more coming into the market. I'm not worried about them, as I said, grand opening, grand closing, because they don't add value. People don't want the cheapest, they want the best. People do not want the cheapest, they want the best, not with home sales. So those are some of the changes coming down, AI, data mining, bots, you're gonna see more of that. Um, every CRM has it now, where auto-responding, they'll engage, they'll book appointments, you can control what they say. Uh, instant offers, that's gonna be a big one, that's gonna to continue to grow, and I think wholesaling will continue to grow, because it's, it's popular, you don't have to get licensed and go through schooling, um, and you get to make a profit. So, and, and discount brokers, you're gonna see more of them, especially as prices are up, and there's more money on the table. So now let's talk about the fun. What do we do? Anyone have an idea? What should we do? What should your plan be in case you get that call? And ironically, you raise your hand and you got the call. So I did two things. I shifted a little bit of my lead um, sources to another zip code for now. Okay. Um, and then also in Realtor, what they're doing is they're allowing you to have your face on a Okay. Uh, meaning that if you go under, let's say, Cranford, and that's an area you want to and build your brand, then you can have a slot on the screen. So if you go into Realtor and you say, Cranford, New Jersey, then your face or your listings or whatever you want to be there, you can pay for that spot. And that's separate from lead gen, by the way. Yeah. That's just a banner. You're basically paying for a banner, mm -hmm. not lead gen. But, okay, so shifting the zip, you were able to shift out of Union County, because they pulled that rug, and you shifted to a different county. Any, anyone else, what would you guys do if you got that call? How would you shift your business? Double down on referral, Google, someone said, sorry, pay-per-click? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about doubling down on referral. But one, don't let the rug get pulled from under you. I think today now, a lot of us had an aha moment of what's really going on. The three major changes coming and actually happening today. So you guys are prepared. Um, don't wait to get priced out as they see we are making more money because prices are up and commissions are up, they're going to raise their prices. They're a for-profit company that's publicly traded, that has to answer to shareholders, and has to get the stock price up. So they have to generate more dividends. So prices. And you don't want to be subject to that 29% decrease in income if you were paying for a lead and now you have to pay 35% on the back end. Doing the math, guys, it's about almost 30% less revenue. And if your lender backs out or drops out, you're in really dangerous water with generating leads for yourself, for your team, and continuing to grow your business. So, do still use these portals. I said this several times. I'm not saying get out of here and just call and cancel and say, hey, I got $1,000 a month to spend on something else. I'm not saying that, but just be prepared as these shifts come. Have, start to work on your backup plan. Start to work on parallel, um, something else that's gonna generate business. The dependency, if you have one where you're not outbound, you're not looking to build your business and do proactive things, you need to figure it out today, and we're gonna talk about what to do. Um, invest the monthly spend on relationships and people versus impressions, guys. It's a people business. Bots, artificial intelligence, e-offers, instant offers, they are, there's, there's no people concept. People buy people, 
right? Buyers need us. Yes, yeah, seller could sell their home on their own, and then they navigate, they fumble, they lose money. But invest in people. There's some great coaches out there in the industry to talk about tr chasing relationships instead of transactions. Because it's relationships. This business is relationships. So rather than being dependent on the leads, if you invest and shift a little bit into building relationships, the leads will come. You'll build a magnet. And the more we can take control of the relationships, the less of a threat technology is, period. We're the biggest threat. If we do not engage, add value, work on our relationships, then absolutely. They don't need us. Bots, artificial intelligence can do our job. There's companies out west right now where their, their lockbox can scan the back of your driver's license because there's like a barcode. That registers who goes in, unlocks the door. Do they need a realtor to be there? There's cameras everywhere, right? So we need to build value. Speaking about cameras, real quick sidebar, it just popped in my head. Uh, we had a seller and an agent was telling me this, and just be careful with cameras, guys, they're everywhere. The doorbells, the inside, you don't notice them. We had a, an agent was telling me that the seller called them with feedback. And the seller's like, yeah, they really want the house. They're gonna make an offer of this. And I think we should say counter this. And the agent's like, yeah, I was just like, how do they know this? And they asked the seller, well, why are you so sure? Did they, did they tell you I'm gonna call the agent? They shouldn't be negotiating with you. And, he, and the seller's like, no, I heard them on the camera. <laughs> so guys, everyone in this room, be careful when you guys are showing properties. Um, someone is listening, the doorbells, the, the, outside, the outside motion detector ones inside the house. There are cameras everywhere, so just be careful. But getting back on track, um, that's why it's so important that we build these relationships, because can technology fill that void to open up doors? Yeah, it's happening now in, in, in the West Coast and Midwest. But if you can shift from working leads to working referrals, your referrals are here, guys. Your referrals are already customers. Your referrals are the easiest low-hanging fruit that you can work on. Why do we chase the leads and you have to go through these stages and funnels and follow up and build rapport and all the work when if you work by referrals, you're already getting to here and you skip this, figuring out leads, making them prospects, right? And we've all had that experience where you got that referral, they refer you someone else. Next, next thing you know, you go to like a housewarming and you're walking in like, hey, 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 right? Because you know everyone, because you've helped their entire family. So that's a much easier way to pick up customers than like trying to do one by one, trying to convert a lead online. But if it's working for you and you're converting and, and you're getting a good ROI, keep it going. But just keep in mind when that shift happens, this is the best way to allocate your money. Now, if you have a team, we're gonna, we'll talk about that on another training, like all these other resources, and I have some slides that's gonna talk about a bunch of different avenues where you could generate if you need an abundance. But for most agents, working with customers, which are referral-based, is a better ROI. So, how to pivot. Low-hanging fruit. Inbound leads, past clients, referrals, warm leads, people you meet at an open house, anyone you're face to face with. But we like to go for the higher fruit, which is harder to convert, the FISBOs, the expired. And listen, again guys, if you can do this and it works for you, great, keep doing it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. But agents chase the shiny objects here when the low hanging fruit is right here. And that's where, by the way, a majority of the business comes from. But how much are you spending towards these people? Question yourself. Look in the mirror. How much am I putting into my past clients, my referrals, my versus how much I'm spending? If it happens to you, if you get that call, looking at the low hanging fruit of, of these, I've heard you talk about this before. Leverage Zillow, get reviews, claim all that stuff. If, if you get pulled, 
So you get pulled out of the realtor, use their platforms. That's where the buyers and sellers still are. Definitely use them, but don't become dependent and your whole business revolves around it. Because when that call happens, you're going to panic and your business is going to be into a valley until you could figure it out and rebuild. So shift in the mindset. If you guys want a book, good book to read, The Power of Focus. Because it's a mindset shift, guys. Most of this business is here. It's from the neck up. You know, yeah, we have to go upstairs, we gotta do a lot of grunt work, send paperwork, but most of the business is here. And if you could shift your mindset into, I'm gonna work by referral, I'm gonna work on my database, you'll make a lot more money with easier transactions. So the value of working by referral, 70%, 76% of transactions were referral of past clients, but we chased the 24%. Highest conversion rate, right? We've all had that referral and such and such calls, you're like, hey, you know, this person wants to buy or sell, you're like, great, you call them, they're like, yeah, they spoke so highly of you, you tell me what to do. And you're like, bing, home run. But then you get that online lead, and it's like, yeah, I have a mortgage guy, he works for my credit union, and I have an attorney, it's like this prepaid legal that comes out of my check, and you're like, oh my God. Who's ever had those prepaid legal attorneys? They are the worst, right? They are the worst, because they don't care. They're getting a, a small amount, and, and you know, the credit unions sometimes are just a nightmare because they're not mortgage companies. They don't do volume of mortgages, so their processing, it's just, it's just a mess. But those referrals, like who, who do you use? Can you refer me? Isn't that the best question? Do you have someone, right? But you're not necessarily getting that from the online leads. Save you time in the time cycle. You generate buyers and sellers. Agents tend to think I only generate buyer leads from referrals. No, it's both, buyers and sellers. Zero to little cost, highest ROI, and you are in control. You're controlling your business, you're controlling your destiny, you're controlling your income. If your shift is working by referral. Easier transactions, because they're using your team. They are using your team for the most part. Why make the shift? 41% of sellers who use a real estate agent found their agent through a referral by friends or family. And 20, but 26% use the agent that they previously worked with. Why? Only 26% use the agent they previously worked with? It's because... And why aren't you guys following up? It's not that you're not working, but why aren't you guys following up? Bingo! Wow, this is like the best crowd ever. You guys <laughs> totally get it. But that's it. We're chasing the shiny object. Because you're paying for these leads, you've got to convert them now. you got the pressure. I don't want to waste my money. i got to follow up. And you're chasing that new lead that's harder to convert versus the people that already want to work with you. Right? But only 26% do. Um, sellers would definitely use their agent again, 74%. But realistically, only 26% of the time do they use that previous agent because we do not follow up. Uh, one of the agents that we had on a, I think it was a Zoom during COVID, Nate Martinez down in, um, down in Phoenix, Arizona. I picked this up from him. I, I think Carl uses it too. He calls it the orphan agents. He markets to the buyers on the homes that he sells. He's the listing agent. Doesn't know the buyers, never met them, but he markets to them. Why? Because he knows 75% of them will not follow up. And guess what? When those buyers decide to sell, they call Nate. You know where he, he works the best if the person, does, if the agent doesn't come from that area. Correct. Bingo. That's another reason. Seven, he's getting, I think he said about 12 deals a year from those orphan clients that he never met. He sold the home previously, so they know that he knows the home. And he's the only one following up. It's a layup. It's a layup, right? But we're so busy chasing the new leads that we leave the low-hanging fruit. Literally, we leave it. It's right there in front of us, but we're trying to reach for this. So working by referral, make deposits in your relationships, commit to a system to stay in front of clients, stay in touch, express gratitude, build your brand. And I'm going to talk about building brand. Meet your clients where they are. That's an important one. And what I mean by that is, I have agents all the time that don't like social media. 
Uh, you guys are not gonna believe this. I do not like social media. <laughs> a couple of you um, worked with me when I managed the Remax in Island, and I was just a manager. I was off Facebook for years. And 26 I uh, turned on my Facebook. And it was weird because it had been years. I didn't ha the account was shut down. I thought it was deleted. I was able to log back in. They recognized my email. And everything was there. And I was like, whoa, this doesn't really get deleted. But in two months, I closed five transactions from being back on Facebook. And I said, love it or hate it, ah, uh, got to use it. Because that's where your clients are. And these are people that would not have contacted me because we didn't have each other's information. And I was going to be out of sight, out of mind. But if your clients are on social media, you got to meet them there. If your clients like to text, and I know our text inboxes are full, you got to meet them there. If someone likes to talk on the phone, guess what? You got to talk on the phone. And that means you got to keep your voicemail box empty so they could leave you a message. Because if they like to talk on the phone and your voicemail box is full, no bueno. No, 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 no. Does not work for them, right? Create a plan, create a system, guys. Very simple, we could help with this. Uh, for those of you, for those agents in my office, quick plug, um, watch the Think Tank, it's in the Facebook group. Uh, we have a special course running from Buffini that we'd love for you guys to partake in. There's a raffle with it too, and it's gonna be really uh, impactful to your business, but that's gonna help you with the plan for past clients for, from Buffini and Co. But you guys can Google this if you want a plan on how to follow up with past clients. You can ask anyone on the leadership team. Uh, create a list of tasks that you're going to do. Schedule the task in your calendar. Obtain resources. This is a hard thing. Agents say, well, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to give. Thanksgiving, Popeyes, etc." Google it. Figure it out. Ask your broker. Ask for help. Be consistent. That's the key. The magic pill, guys, is consistency. When people ask me, well, how do, I, how do you do this? It's consistency. It's consistency. That's the magic pill. Trying new things, shiny objects. You know, what I mean, when you're following up with a client, you know, I'm one of those people that can't stand when people call me to walk in our, So if you don't pick up, I should call you like three times in a row? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, with a client, when enough is, you know, when enough is too much, you know what I mean? Yep, when yep, yep, yep. Three times for the year or four times, yep. not enough. We can help with that, and, and you can always find that out. Make deposits in your relationships. Invest your time to keep in touch. Add value to the relationships. Call, contact everyone looking to help. Don't, and I took a, a, a course, I, actually it was a Remax uh, convention, where a marketing speaker that they had come in said, never text someone checking in, because that's what everyone does. Mm -hmm. You don't differentiate yourself. You're not adding value, you're bugging the person. Checking in for what? Like what value are you adding? You have to make deposits in your relationships before you can make withdrawals. You have to add value. You have to give not looking to get. I'll give you guys a quick funny story that happened last night. Past client of mine from five, five or six, six years ago uh, calls looking to sell their home. And we'd been in touch. My wife is great at sending holiday cards and following up. And uh, we'd met, we'd gone to their kids. Uh, when they had kids, we bought them a gift. And they became kind of friends. But you know, we, we talked to them maybe once a year. They call. And you know, we've made our deposits in the relationship. So they're get, trying to give us the business back. And they said, uh, oh, we want to sell the house. Walk them through it. And we're done, and we're like, great. You know, my wife's like, all right, you know, I'll call you whenever. And they're like, oh, by the way, our kids would like to say hi to your kids. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> you know. And then she's like, yeah, you know, they don't have friends, because they moved from New York, and they never really made friends. They still go to New York for everything, so they didn't go to church here. They hang out in New York, so they don't have friends. It's like, yeah, our kids need friends, so can they, can they chat? And I'm like, uh, our kids are getting ready for bed. And, and uh, I don't know. And she says, uh, well, why don't I video call you? I was like, oh, you have, a, you, you have an iPhone? She's like, no. And I'm like, yes. She can't video call me. I'm like, yes, she can't video call me. All right, we're, we're getting off the phone. She's like, but I have WhatsApp. And I'm like, 
yeah, I don't, I don't know if I have that. I don't know if I could log in. So, oh no, you have it. We've watched that before. And I'm like, Duh. <laughs> So then she WhatsApps me. And, we're, and, and the, I literally was like, boys, come here. And they're like, who is this? Who are these kids? But the kids actually talked. They're into, what were they into? Star Wars. So, so they hit it off, and they're making funny faces and doing all this stuff. And then I hang up, and I said to Nicole, I was like, that was a deposit. She was like, what? And I was like, that, that's a deposit. Like, that's what builds relationships, right? It, I made, we made a deposit of our time and helped them and helped their kids. But now we have to set up a play date. <laughs> funny, funny thing, funny, funny thing. So we have passes to Turtleback Zoo. And with our pass, we get to bring two other kids and one other adult. So I was just like, hey, Nicole has a pass to Turtleback Zoo. You can go with the kids. Don't even pay. Cole looked at me, she was like, what about you? And I was just like, this is you. Right, but those are the that you make in building your relationships. Can a bot, can, a, can, can an AI have a conversation with you? So she's not going to call or go online or go to a bot or, or go to you know, any virtual company to do her transaction. She's coming back to us. And ironically, in the six years, she's probably referred us about five people. Guys, it's a relationship business. Anything for a lead? Ah, that, that's a whole nother story. But yes, um, it's a relationship business. Make deposits in the relationships. Staying in touch. Calls on special occasions. Mark these things in your calendar. Anniversaries, kids' anniversaries. We have surveys. I know we don't all use them. But we have surveys in dot loop at the closing table, after closing. Get this information. Pay attention to their social media. If they're celebrating a wedding anniversary, Mike Napoleano that I was talking about, he had a wedding anniversary. And I, this morning, I wished him happy anniversary. Pay attention, right? Call them. Um, the birthdays, the anniversaries, when there's 75 or 175 happy birthday wishes on Facebook, that's not as impactful as if you pick up the phone and call. You just blend in. And people don't even respond. It's like, thank you to everyone that wished me happy birthday. That's not a deposit, guys. Uh, text conversations versus checking in. Be ready to have a conversation. Call, text with an agenda. Not like, hey, it's Olivier checking in. Say something. Have something to talk about. The checking in texts are just like the checking in calls. They're very awkward. Right? Hey, it's me, Olivier. Just checking in. How are things? Things are great. Good. And that's it. It is extremely awkward, which is why we don't do them. But create an agenda. Have something to call about. Have something to talk about. Have a conversation. Be prepared to have a conversation. And if you find something, it can be what's happening in the world. It can be an update. It can be something with our industry. It can be, hey, I'm hosting an open house. I wanted to personally invite you because I want to see you. Right? And then that leads down the road to a conversation. But be prepared to have conversations versus checking, checking in. Um, engage with social media. That's meeting your clients where they are because they're all on social media, love it or hate it. Um, Popeyes and reverse Popeyes. Anyone not know what reverse Popeyes are? They come to you. Bingo. Um, so Popeyes, uh, a lot of coaches preach Popeye, drop something off of value, ice scrapers before it snows, pies around Thanksgiving. Uh, what's, the, what's the holiday one around 4th of July? The ketchup, mustard, relish. You know, I want to catch up because I relish our relationship and let's cut the mustard. Like, those are the Popeye items that, that, that you bring. I, I'm actually proud of myself for remembering that because <laughs> Um, and then the reverse Popeyes are, hey, everyone, please come by my house. Please come by my office. I have something for you. I just need you to stop by because now you're not driving around New Jersey. Those are called reverse Popeyes. And you could have something of value, pie, cake, whatever it is. Um, and you call it a reverse Popeye, have them all come. And I'll tell you this from my experience, and if you guys feel the same way, our, those buyers, they want to see the inside of our homes. We've been in their house, right? It's, it's interesting. We've been in their house, 
We know their house. So they'd like to see, I've had plenty of clients say, I'd love to see what, what, what your house looks like. Why? Because we're also saying, oh, you can blow out this wall, you can paint this, accent wall here. They're like, oh, you're a designer, I'd love to see your house. The reverse Popeyes well, work well. They would love nothing better than to come to your home, you give them a, a, a cake, a, a, a pie, whatever, they get to experience and be part of that glue that you know bond and, and see what your house is like, it's absolutely something that works. One of the agents in East Brunswick does it and, and does very well with it. Outings with clients, invite them out. Uh, one of our agents in Cranford goes out twice a week with past clients, invites them out for coffee or just to catch up for lunch. Video messages, this worked well during the pandemic. Video CMAs, et cetera. Um, mailers are back. I preached this uh, personal marketing company and their five-year campaign to mail the clients four times a year for 25 bucks. It's the best $25 you could spend in, in the business to me. I, I, I would hope that one day they would award me some stock because I'm always selling it. Um, but people are actually looking at the mail again from being home. Express gratitude. Thank them immediately prior to the results. I'm going to raise my hand. Has anyone ever gotten a referral and you're so busy, you're running around, you forget who gives you the referral, you close and you're like, who do I gotta thank? <laughs> I know it's happened to me and I made a shift. Thank people right away. Don't tie the results of the referral. Wait if they get approved and they decide to buy with you or they decide to sell with you. Thank the referee right away. It's not their job. I just had this conversation with an agent this week. He got a referral and he was telling me about it. And he said, I asked, well, how much do you know how much they're approved for? And I'm like, no, that's not the referee's job to worry about how much they're approved for. You should be thanking them and not being the gatekeeper of whether you want to work with that person or not, because it's not gratitude. Thank them right away and have a, a process. Small gestures, it doesn't have to be big. A $25 Starbucks gift card, a $5 Starbucks gift card, Stopping by and just to say hello, that's a deposit that people appreciate because it's a, a gesture of your time. Be creative. Uh, some of our agents are very creative with little things. Give not looking to get, right? And if you take control, you become the lead magnet, which is something I love to say. If you're converting leads, keep on, but just be prepared, guys. There's going to be a shift and you're going to have to shift. If you tried it and it doesn't work, I think you should full on shift today, right? If you're any of these agents that have tried Zillow and for whatever reason your territory, um, being able to respond immediately, it hasn't worked for you or realtor, shift today. Don't worry about the next shiny object, the next lead company, shift to working by referral, the low hanging fruit. And plan to incorporate a referral system so that guys, team leaders included, everyone, when that shift happens, yeah, you can always jump to another lead, you can do pay-per-click, you can, um, I have a whole slide of like different things you can do, but go after the low-hanging fruit. Higher conversion. Give your team members those, those leads. Work on the value that you've already built, those relationships, and work by referral. And that's how you become a lead magnet. So real quick on building your brand, does the community know you? And this is a really good question. Outside of your friends and family, if you're walking in town, does the community know you? Does your dry cleaner, does the restaurant, do the restaurants you frequent, do they know that you're in real estate? Or do they just know you as Olivier that likes to have um, Thai basil fried rice with chicken and shrimp, <laughs> right? My, uh, one of the restaurants I go to, they, well, several, they know I'm in real estate. We've gotten referrals. I tell this story, two agents from our office, uh, they are not here, um, went to lunch. One had a badge, bring their laptop. The owner of the restaurant says, hey, I want to buy a house. I see you guys are in real estate because the Remax badge. They're like, oh, great. Well, what are you looking at? He said, listen, I already drove by. Could you show me the house today? Pull it up, sure. Book an appointment. He goes, buys a house, $800,000. And now they're telling me, you got to go try this restaurant. It's great. I'm like, yeah, of course it's great for you. You've got an $800,000 sale. <laughs> but does your 
do you have a brand in town? Right? Do people know you and say, hey, you're the realtor, right? I know you from somewhere. That's when you're winning, when you're building a brand, when you're part of the community, when people recognize you. And they don't have to know your company. It's not about that brand, but that you're in real estate or you're doing something. And that's what's important. Can customers get in touch with you? This is to my point before about voicemails. Um, if I call, frankly, and I can't leave a voicemail, I don't want to do business. Because is, if the buyer calls you and they can't leave you a voicemail, how are you going to sell my home? Your voicemail box being full is like walking up to a restaurant, you tug on the door, and it's not open in the middle of the day when it should be. Right? So guys, it's a little thing, but it, you will lose business from it. You lose one or two deals. Just monetize how much that is versus cleaning out your voicemail box. Mm -hmm. So can new customers get in touch with you? Um, Google yourself. What shows up on Google? Do you have the stock image or do you have a photo? Do you have a bio? Right? Are the numbers correct? Right? Google yourself. So how do you work on your brand? More signage. Signs to me are billboards before billboards came and will always be billboards. As many signs. I yelled at one of our agents last week because she sold the house before it was listed and she's like, yes, yeah, so I didn't even have to go put a sign. And I'm like, you want the sign. You want the sign. How are you going to get the neighbors to know? Signs are billboards, guys. Literally. Um, a realtor gig. The story about our two agents going to lunch together, without the badge, it wouldn't have happened. More realtor gear. More community exposure. National night out, good job. Um, whatever's happening in your community, get involved. That's where you build a brand in your community. Train your sphere on referrals versus word of mouth. Um, I had Stacy Randall Brown speak, who wrote a book that I read. And it was so cool to like call an author and be like, hey, do you mind speaking to our office? And it was how to work by referral. And one of the many takeaways is there's word of mouth and there's referrals. You got to train your people. And this is like your immediate, start with your immediate. If someone says, hey, you know, you should work with this Olivier. Olivier, he's good, he was my agent. That's word of mouth. But if someone connects you to, that's a referral. Because I've gotten a lot, and it's so crazy when I read this book, and I was just like, that's, people, I told such and such about you. And I'm like, oh, did you get their number? No, but they're going to call you. Never got a call. Has that happened to anyone? In That's word of mouth. Guys, there's a big difference between word of mouth and a referral. You have to train people. And I've trained the, the, the um, WhatsApp family that we WhatsApp last night and, and video called. I trained her because all these New Yorkers wouldn't call me. And I trained her um, of how to connect me through referrals. I said, if you don't mind, in the future, group text or send an email with us together. Now that's a referral and there's accountability where the person has to engage. That's a big difference than word of mouth. So when next time someone says to you, hey, I told such and such about you, say, I appreciate it, that is awesome. Do me a favor, next time if you don't mind making an introduction, I feel like that works a little, that works a little bit better. And group text, email, or just give me their contact info. That's better than word of mouth. We all just said, we've all had the word of mouth. Someone's gonna call you and you never get that call. So, Train your sphere on referrals versus word of mouth. And then uh, make your message about helping. I love seeing this, but I think it's the wrong message. When you're on Facebook or Instagram and you're like, close five houses today, dollar sign. Oh. <laughs> wrong message. No one wants to add fuel to your jet. No one wants to promote your lifestyle. Always make the message, and, and if you're closing, we have some agents in here, several, that are closing a house every four days, literally. Like, that's the average. That's great. Closing, closing, closing. People are just like, just imagine your friend that's an accountant every Friday is like, paycheck, paycheck, paycheck. <laughs> no one wants to see that, guys. Make it about, I help this family. So excited to get them over to, into their first home. So excited to get this seller to Florida and help him sell his home. We overcame obstacles. This family, you know, never thought home ownership was possible. Give a message. People like the story. People like 
what's going on. It's like reality TV, right? People like what's happened in the background, not seeing you getting a paycheck. And remember, guys, I don't know what society, what the number is, but people think when, we, when you post closing, it's like what they see on million dollar listing. Yes. That's what they think. So do you think they want to see like three times in one week that you made 30 grand? They don't want to see that. So make your messaging about helping people while you're closing, that's fine. But not just look at me another paycheck. Um, and then give back, shop small business. Again, that story with our agents going to lunch, shopping local and become a townie. I like to say that. Uh, the more you do in the town, people get to know you, you support all the businesses, it comes back. You become a regular. Um, I go in, I've been in my town for 12 years now. People know me because I've been there so long and they see me at jazz night and every event and they get to see me in my, and, and they, hey, how's it going? I have people nodding and saying hi to me that I've seen for years. I don't know who they are. They don't know my name. I don't know their name. But we see each other and we acknowledge that we've been seeing each other in town for years. Right? Shame on me, I'm not in sales. I should be wearing more realtor gear and they would, it would have a real estate conversation. But sometimes with my kids, I don't wanna have a work talk because I'm not on. I'm just trying to make sure no one's getting hurt. But for you guys, um, if you're able to have the conversation and engage, do as much as you can in your town. Support the local business, but wear your realtor gear while you do it because it will spark conversations. So what you can control, you can't control the eye buyers. You can't control Zillow turning into a brokerage. Don't worry about that, guys. It may happen, but it's years from happening. They're a publicly traded company that can't flip a switch and change their model today. They cannot. If they could have, they probably would have already. They cannot make a massive change. Can it? Now, account companies and don't worry about that. I remember when rebates and I'm sorry, got that new agent. They're going to want rebates. Rebates have been active in New Jersey since 2011. Probably one person in here has ever used a rebate. It's not a thing. There's so much to worry about. Don't worry. You can't control many of this stuff. Technology advancing helps, but the AIs and the bots, don't worry about it. Wholesaling, taking our inventory. Here's what we can control, adding value. Being the best agent you could be. Making yourself not replaceable by technology. Right? Think about that. If what you do can't be done by technology, which is the relationships, which is the coddling, which is the psychology part, which is giving them different options, which is educating them. No one's going to sit there and listen to a bot or an IE or a program or watch YouTube and figure out how to buy a house and then just try to do it on their own. But if you're not doing it, they're gonna go there for resources and that's where you don't add value. But if you're adding value, if you're building relationships, if you work on your conversion, which is follow-up, if you have a process for past clients, if you are following up, if you are executing, those are the things you can control and those are the things that will drive your business and keep you in business even when those zip codes get pulled, the lead platforms change, or you don't even have that option. These are the things that you can control. You get that call, and there is tons of places to go, guys. What I don't wanna see for you guys is they pull that zip code and you're like, well, let me try this, then I'll try this, then I'll try this, then I'll try this. 20 bucks here, $10 here. These are all the different sites that you can buy leads from, guys. These are all the different companies trying to sell you something so that you're distracted from following up and nurturing those relationships. Because the minute you're not nurturing those relationships, where are those customers going? They're going here. And they generate leads. And that's how they make money. They don't want you to nurture your relationships. Because they don't make money when the clients are going directly to you. So don't fall into the trap of dependency of, okay, realtor gets pulled, Zillow gets pulled, and now I gotta see which one of these actually works. Make a shift and try to work by referral. And guys, I, you know, for those of you with teams, I get it. You need to generate a lot of leads and referrals are not enough or 
the one thing I never mastered was that personal referral, how to shift it to someone else, because they always wanted me. And it's like, oh gosh, I, even now, you know, I'm not in sales. Then they're like, I don't care, it's you. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't do that anymore. I almost want to tell them I don't have MLS access. Like, I can't even list your house, <laughs> right? So I get it. The referrals, sometimes you have to keep to yourself as team leaders, but you can't, that's not enough to give your team. There's tons of different options and, and, and different ways to generate leads without going to that last slide of the 50 different lead companies and online portals that want to take your $19.99 to $999 a month. There are other alternatives, guys, to work on, not just for you as team leaders and individual agents, for your team members as well. So how to pivot? Let's all shift. I hope the one thing we got from today is the low-hanging fruit. The past clients, the referrals, the warm leads. Let's make a pivot, implement that as part of your business, and let's stop chasing the shiny objects. And again, I'm going to leave and finish with this. If it's working for you, run with it until that day comes. But you guys will remember this, hopefully, that that day is going to come. So when you get that call, you're not going to be caught off guard. And the next day, you're still moving and you're still working versus having to tell team members or having to look at your business as, what do I do now? And that's what we don't want to happen. So working by referral and having a system avoids that. So that's it, guys. I appreciate it. I know this wasn't a takeaway of 20 different things to do, but guys, you know, I, I built a business on referral. I worked with previous companies where I did outbound, but you can absolutely build your business on referral. I wouldn't be here and create a presentation if it wasn't important, especially with the changes happening now. So before the rug gets pulled under you, just look at that business. It's the low hanging fruit that converts higher. And we know the buyers and sellers want to work with us. We just don't focus on it because we're paying for this and doing that. But there's so much business right there. So keep, keep, out, keep a lookout for next month, guys. Uh, our top agent panel is going to be great. I'm really excited to hear three different perspectives from different brokers in different places. Appreciate you guys coming out. Any questions, let me know. Thanks again.